So welcome back with the second part of this virtual classroom. So now we are going to talk about the anthropoids. First, I want to, to tell you guys that for the purpose of the class, you only need to know the difference between the groups. So for example, what is the difference between a prosimian and an anthropoid? Or what is the difference between a strepsarine and a haplorine? Just the basic. You don't need to know every single detail of all the species that you are going to see here. So that being said, let's begin. So here we're going to have the group of the anthropoids. So in the anthropoids, we are going to have humans, apes, and monkeys. And we are going to have these traits. The first one, rounded brain cases. So if you touch your the back of your head, you're going to feel, feel that you're going to you are you, are ha you have a round brain case. So that's one trait of anthropoid. Also reduced non-mobile outer ears, relatively small flat faces instead of muscles, a highly effective reproductive system, and highly serious hands. When we're talking about the hands, we are going to see the anthropoids have more, um, the, uh, more joints, more, um, the steadity in doing things with their hands than prosimians. Also, we have the, a highly effective reproductive system because some anthropoids do, um, don't depend on a system of estrus, like, for example, a dog. It, it have like a, a monthly cycle. So, so we're going to divide the anthropoids in two big categories, the catarines and the platyrines. And the most important difference between the two categories is about, uh, is about where the nostrils of the nose are facing. So in the catarines, the nostrils are facing downward and the nostrils are narrow. In the platyrines, the nostrils are facing outward and they are broad and um, they have flat bridged noses. So mostly the catarines will include the old world monkeys, the apes, and humans. So if you want to see if that's true, uh, touch your nostrils right now and um, tell me, well, tell yourself where your nostrils are facing. In the case of the platyrines, we are going to see that that only include the new world monkeys. So here we have all um, another picture of this. So you're gonna see the platyrines with the broad nose, uh, the catarines with the narrow nose, the nostril facing uh, forward, the nostril facing downward. And another thing that is very important, that platyrines have prehensile tail. When we talk about a prehensile tail, it's a tail that at like a hand. It can grab objects, it can manipulate objects. Um, also, platyrines are the only one that live completely in trees. We are only going to see terrestrial anthropoids among the species in the catarines. So let's see, let's talk about the monkeys then. So new world monkeys. In the new world, uh, except for humans, we are not going to find any other type of anthropoid. So newer monkeys are going to have three premolars. And the number of premolars is very important when we are talking about evolution. For example, a mammal is going to have four premolars. The prosimians have three premolars. The newer monkeys are going to have three premolars. But we were talking about all were monkeys, apes, and humans. They are going to have two premolars. So it's like an evolution, evolutionary trend to the reduction of premolars when we are talking about primate evolution. Some of them have a prehensile tail. Uh, um, uh, they are completely arboreal. We don't have terrestrial monkeys in the new world. There's a lot of variation in their size. The diet, very basic, insect, nectar, sap, fruits, and leaf. And we're going to have two families, the cali Calitrichus and Sevits. So for the purpose of the exam, you don't need to worry about the families. The onward monkeys, as I said before, it have two premolars, 
uh, none of the old world monkeys have a prehensile tail. They are more closely related to humans because they have the same number of teeth as apes and humans. Uh, old world monkeys are going to live in a lot of, 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 of habitats. So we are going to have some of them living exclusively in the tree, but some of them can live in the tree and the ground. And we have some of them that live completely on the ground. For example, in the picture, we have the gelada baboon, and that monkey is completely terrestrial. So we have all world monkeys in Africa, India, Pakistan, and Japan. And we have two subfamilies, the colobines and the cercopithecines. The colobines are mostly arboreal monkeys, and the cercopithecines include most of the terrestrial monkeys. All world monkeys gonna exhibit something called sexual dimorphism. That is a very important characteristic that we need to learn. When we're talking about sexual dimorphism, we mean that we can see a very marked difference between the male or the female of an, of an species. It could be in the size, it could be in the weight, it could be in the teeth, it could be in the appearance. So in newer monkeys, we don't see that uh, big difference in sexual dimorphism. It's something that we are going to see more in all world monkeys and apes. Some old world monkeys are going to have an adaptation called ischial callosities that enables them to sit on the ground comfortably for long periods of time. It's, it's kind of a cushion. So. Here we have the, our next group, the hominoids, that are uh, that going to include the apes and humans. So let's see the different traits. Remember, for the exam, I'm interested in the difference between groups. So hominoids, relatively large brain, especially the cerebral cortex, fairly long arms, longer and stronger hands, short, broad trunks, no tails, joints in shoulder, wrists, and elbow for more movement, that is very important because apes, including humans, have have more joints, have more um, bones that allow for more movement. Also, some variety can suspend, swing, and climb hand over hand from branch to branch. We are going to call that move, movement brachiation. And some of them uh, can do bipedal movement, but only humans are able to do bipedal movement 24 7. for example a chimpanzee can walk into leg for a while but after a while he will get tired and will have to use his knuckles for support 